uh, we have to understand that the whole of the American continent today is built on a system of colonialism. But it was never, never about indigenous rights. For us indigenous people, we see them as part of the colonial system. So what should we understand about the political and economic situation in South America today? I'd say, like, historically, to begin with, uh, we have to understand that the whole of the American continent today is built on a system of colonialism, uh, from Canada down to Argentina. There's not one state that is actually built, that actually operates uh, politically and economically in favor of the indigenous people or of the other oppressed uh, people, peoples. Um, in terms of South America, where I'm from, uh, specifically Colombia, or I call it Muisca territory, which is the original name, the Muisca people. Um, I'd say that uh, we, yeah, again, this, the system is, is built around a, a colonial, uh, a colonial system. The political class in Colombia are mostly of European descent. Uh, they are mostly, they've, they've been traditionally the, the political rulers and the, and the economic uh, powerhouse on, in, in, in our region. Um, the president, Juan Manuel Santos, is originally from Andalusia, Spain. His ancestors uh, came in the late uh, 18th century. Uh, some of them fought uh, in the independence movement. So Juan Manuel Santos is great, you know, very, uh, great, great, I don't know how many great grandmother um, fought in the independence movement for Colombia, supposedly independence movement. Uh, but we, we say that the independence movement was actually the transfer of power between one set of Europeans to another set of Europeans. So you had the Republicans and the Royalists. The Republicans uh, who we call Criollos. Criollos in Spanish is uh, people who is Europeans who were born on the American continent. Uh, so, you, so in English it would be like uh, white settlers. So it was the white settlers against the royalists, so who who were under, who were acting on behalf of the royal of power in Spain. Um, they, so, so the criollos, the white settlers, are protesting against the the, the crown, against the the king of Spain, uh, because they say that there's unjust, um, there's unjust policies towards them. Uh, they they have to pay taxes. They, they can't move freely around the region. Uh, so, that, you know, if, if they're from a certain region, they couldn't go to another region because they, they wanted to control the population. But it was never, never about indigenous rights. Uh, throughout the whole movement, Simon Bolivar, the main hero of this movement, or the main leader of the movement, um, he, he, was, he came from a class of of colonials who had uh, enslaved Africans, who had enslaved indigenous people, who had plantations uh, of sugar, um, sugar plantations. Uh, they also had mines, silver and gold mines in, in what is now Venezuela. So uh, so Bolivar was, was never uh, a truly anti-colonialist. He was never truly anti-imperialist, though today, uh, there's a uh, a revised version of that history, you know. Where Simon Bolivar is painted as a as the leader of anti-imperialism, the first anti-imperialist leader, and and the independence movement of the early 1800s is seen as the first anti-imperialist movement 
uh, on our continent. Uh, the reality is that the, the, they were hardly anti-imperialist. They were anti-imperialist simply because they were against the crown. Uh, but for us indigenous people, we we must see them as part of the colonial system. So the, this independence movement by the white settlers in the early 1800s is seen as the main uh, movement for many of our people as well as for the political class. Uh, so the political class our oppressors today, the, the people in, in Colombia, the political class in Colombia love Simon Bolivar. They exalt him as you know the liberator of our con- of, uh, of South America and of our country. And um, but other movements who were truly anti-imperialist, who were truly anti-colonialist, like the Comuneros. Who, were, who came before the independence movement. So the independence movement is early 1800. The Comuneros movement is the in the late 17, in the late 18th century. So it came just before the independence movement and they they gave real, real issues to the colonial state. Uh, the comuneros were um, the farmers, uh, the people who were stuck on plantations, basically slaves. Um, and and they created a movement of comuneros who uh, went on strike, who uh, took up arms against the colonials, against uh, their violence physical violence but their economic violence in terms of um, you know high taxes and and so on and forced labor and so on and usually the story of the comuneros is relegated to like just a, a very small part of of the independence movement another one uh, which is not it, it, what this didn't occur in Colombia exactly but which you know had effects all over the all over the region was the Rebellions of Tupac Amaru the second and and Micaela Bastidas in what is now Peru, and also uh, Tupac Katari and Bartolina Sisa in what is now Bolivia, who organized rebellions of um, tens of tens of thousands of indigenous people and African people against uh, the colonials, and uh, and these were truly anti-imperialist and anti-colonialist movements um you know they you can't you can't compare that you can't compare the independence movement of the white settlers so like simon bolivar and others to the in, to the movements of tupac Atari and 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 the rest You can't you can't compare the you can't compare the independence movement of the white settlers to the movements of Tupac Atari and 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 the rest because they were they were they were going to the root uh, they wanted to completely overthrow the system uh, they weren't asking for uh, lower taxes they weren't asking for um, you know the, the the same things that Bolivar and and his movement were asking for they were. They were actually not asking for anything. They were they took up arms, and they were um, they were about overthrowing, completely destroying a system that they knew that they saw that was that could not could not be reformed. It could not be. Uh, they could not take it over. They couldn't assimilate themselves into it. They had to destroy it, and and that's basically what the movement of or these Andean indigenous people were in the and, the, and this occurred in the uh, 1780s so I've, uh, I believe in, uh, it started in what is now Peru in the Peru, uh, Peruvian region in 1780 uh, and then it, it, it lasted around two three years um, it, got, it got put down uh, for various reasons but one of the main reasons is that um, though it it wanted to destroy the political, it wanted to overthrow the political and economic system of the colonials, uh, people, characters like uh, Tupac Amado II, 
wanted to um, wanted a society they weren't he he himself others were but he himself wasn't against uh white people he wasn't against expelling white pe- people or killing white people he he thought that he they could make that he, that the indigenous movement could link with the poor whites to create a new system a new a political system and economic system that was more just for everyone etc um s- soon they ca- gradually they came to realize that it wasn't going to work the uh poor whites the working class whites in in the region uh, betrayed the indigenous movement several times and in the end um it was a betrayal from the europeans from the working class europeans who which brought the which brought the the movement to to its knees um and but but that was Tupac Amaru the second his wife was much more um uh, much more aware that of of the differences in in the struggle um she understood that white people working class white people uh had a certain loyalty had a certain privileges that they benefited from and that it was very difficult for them to let go of and it was very difficult for them to truly uh immerse themselves in 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 the movement that that our people were trying to create uh which was a movement about self govern governance for indigenous people so it, so even though they they wanted to include the working class whites it was clear to the whole movement that what they wanted to achieve was political power must be in the hands of indigenous people and if and if the working class whites wanted to stay under the under the rulership under the power of indigenous people that was fine uh but but then they realized that um the privileges the benefits that the working class europeans uh had in the system meant that they weren't they weren't ever truly going to um accept this uh this position you know um so yeah and so and so you know th- today we um our people we all of us uh, have been taught that we liberated ourselves ourselves in in the early 1800s with the white settler independence movement with Simon Bolivar at the head of that movement uh which is a a complete fabrication <clears throat> anybody who studies object who objectively studies the history of uh so-called latin america will see that simon bolivar was was never truly about um justice for everyone on the continent he 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 had very particular interests uh and his interests were tied with with the colonial class um so then this so then the system that has been developing for the last 200 years is is the same system that they that they developed uh that is is that very same system where the colonial class have power over the majority of the population which is indigenous and african and and we suffer you know we we continue to suffer economically we uh you know the the particularly well all over the continent you see you see this but but you know uh, in, in Colombia uh, in Muisca territory where I'm from um you see that the majority of the people live uh in conditions of poverty uh, i think it's something like 45% of people in Colombia live below the poverty line so this is um absolute poverty no job a uh, very very poor housing no education no healthcare uh surviving on uh very very low wages uh surviving in the informal sector they don't have formal jobs they're not they're not truly connected to to the to the market of the country uh so they so we are basically uh, uh, uh millions of our people are still surviving um 
very much apart from from the system while apart from the system while at the very same time being attacked by the system um because you know the the way the system operates they need our people to be poor they need our people to be disenfranchised politically in order for them to um to sustain the system you know how are, how are, how is a country like colombia going to survive uh how is the political class of colombia going to survive without a huge amount of people living in poverty willing to work for anything that is uh, offered to them the, the, that's the system that was the system back in, in the early 1800s and that's the system today uh where our people are forced to sell their labor uh for uh, almost next n- next to nothing uh with no secure jobs and and yeah that's that's just the reality of, of the majority of our people um the last thing on, on this point is that we also have to uh make a difference between uh the rest of the continent and Venezuela and Bolivia and Cuba because the we always say these these governments are are working under a colonial system but they are trying to use the colonial system that they're working in in order to um give back to the people so they're trying to is 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 a is basically it's a reformist it's quite a reformist movement you know but it's progressive it's it's trying to uh include our people it's the uh economy of the country is not uh, based around um making profits for a, a minority anymore in these in these three countries the, it's based around uh making a profit but in order to uh, redistribute the profit uh within uh, the whole of the society in order for it to to um benefit uh, the majority of the people these systems aren't perfect uh the systems of venezuela bolivia and cuba aren't perfect uh th- there are things to criticize about them um but i would say that whatever we criticize um i believe it, it's not about them consciously making the decision to um to oppress our people or to uh inflict um injustice or or attackers in any way but simply simply due to the fact that we that they are still operating under a colonial system and the fact that they um that you know it is very difficult to um fix a problem of 500 years in in a decade or a decade and a half as it's been in in uh, in Venezuela Cuba which which has been which was liberated in 1950, 1959 is different they've been you know they've been going at it and and they've been an inspiration for for the whole continent and i believe that we wouldn't have in Venezuela or Bolivia uh, the 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 very uh, progressive movements that we have there without Cuba Cuba is uh what what we should be aspiring to they are perfect either but i think they are the most um revolutionary you know they they overthrew the government uh violently they took up arms they said no more um they done away with the uh so-called democratic system of the europeans which is simply uh about two maybe three uh, political parties who uh change power give give themselves the the alternate in power every four years or five years uh they done away with that system and now they have a a one party system which under the circumstances is is probably the most democratic system we have uh because they actually do represent the party the the the, the ruling party in in Cuba actually do represent the uh the voices of, of the majority of the people and and we'll and and you'll see that in Cuba uh we have the uh, the the majority of the people who live in Cuba 
have the most basic necessities they need, you know, you know education, healthcare, housing, and so on. Uh, but it, it's not perfect either. Obviously, there's flaws uh, that need to be worked on. Uh, but but you know, it's something it's something that we should aspire to on the whole continent.